I'm sure that you've heard the phrase, the best offense is a good defense, and I've always thought that was an interesting concept. So I made this mod that literally nobody asked for, and we're going to hop into a game of VU4 and see what the world would look like if defending in war really was OP. We're going to start off by activating our Drew Durno mode here, and we're going to zoom out, and when we click unpause here, you will see every nation in the world will get this bonus as long as they are in a defensive war. And as you can see, the bonuses are basically set to guarantee that they will win any war they get involved in. And after 1500, this will not apply anymore, and the game should move as usual. But the only way to see if it works is to just unpause. The major ones you're looking for early on is Byzantium. If Byzantium can get an ally, like in Serbia, this is really good. When the Ottomans attack them, them and Serbia are going to pop crazy armies out of the ground, and they should get steamrolled. You'll see. So, uh, Mamluks have attacked this uh, Aniza, who now has 17,000 troops, and AQ has 33,000 compared to the Mamluks 39,000. So they've got a two-front war against an enemy army that outnumbers them. So I imagine early on, you're going to see stuff like this where Tunis attacks gets split up between the people that they attack as well as maybe releasing some new nations at least I hope we're going to see some new nations getting popped out Byzantium has indeed been declared on by the Ottomans now if you take a look here you can see that their armies only cost two each and uh, they recruit in 12 days so they can get an army out of the ground very quickly look at these guys are already up to 29,000 Ottomans are at 29,000 so Serbia matches the Ottoman army right now and you'll see they actually recover an extra 500 manpower base per month as well plus the defensiveness bonus and this modifier applies to everybody who is the defender in a war everybody not just the person who gets attacked but their allies their vassals everybody mams are getting absolutely crushed over here as well so two of the great powers in 1444 are right now getting crushed in war this does also help out with things like Timmy, because when Timmy's vassals will declare independence, Timmy will randomly pop 100,000 men out of the ground and crush his subjects. So it can be really helpful in situations like that. Eventually, we'll probably see Ming attack Oirat to try to force them tribute or something like that. And um, yeah, I think it's going to go about as you would expect. Between Oirat and Mongolia, they already have the capacity for a big army. Now, there's a rare tag, Lebanon, over here, with Anisa taking a few provinces as well. But Mamluks already cut down. Tunis was split between Jared, Tripoli, who was released, and Tlemcen. So that's pretty cool as well. Somehow, Ottomans let uh, Byzantium across the strait here. So it's only a matter of time. Take a look at with the extra siege ability. They got three-day siege ticks as well. I don't know about you guys, but I personally love seeing a Purple Phoenix, especially an AI one. Obviously, we're cheating them in, but you know, it's still pretty cool regardless. It's a beautiful color, you got to admit. And the Ottomans just refuse to accept the fact that they can't just go around attacking all their neighbors. Oh, and Burgundy has attacked into the empire only to have Austria and uh, their ally Hungary attack them. So Austria is rocking a cool 68,000 and a Hungary rocking another 62,000. Safe to say Burgundy, not going to be looking too good after this one. Overall, it looks like Burgundy made out okay. They lost two of their subjects in only one province, but at the end of the day, they're still pretty strong. So it definitely could have went much worse for them than it did. And it looks like Venice attacked Ragusa, bringing the full might of the Catholic state down on Venice. But not to be outdone, the French have decided to attack the weak Burgundy between the 40,000 troops from just Burgundy and its ally in Brittany, France is gonna go down. You can't forget about little Flanders over here with 15,000 of their own men. And we can't forget to check Iberia as well. Uh, yep, you, you, you can kind of guess what's going on here. The cool thing about a strong Granada is we might see an Andalusia, which is always cool because that's a pretty rare AI tag. <laughs> oh, yikes, Venice is absolutely no more. Look at that, they released one, two, three, four tags down here in Montenegro and gave up this province to Ragusa as well as this province to the Pope. And Naxos is now independent as well, as well as Crete was also released. Venice just got absolutely dismantled in just one war. And that's what I'm saying. We see so many new tags popping out from this that there's going to be chaos later on. There has to be. Also, Granada took a crazy amount of land down here in Andalusia, which is pretty cool. And Burgundy took a ton of land. They now border Paris. Muscovy over here, absolutely catching some hands after declaring on Tver, uh, who happened to be allied to Novgorod. So yeah, that's going well for them. Poor England stuck with Henry, a 000. And then you look down and Castile has good old Enrique over here. Also a 000. Virgin Giant Poland versus Chad Four Province Teutonic Order. Beating the crap out of them and sieging down their capital. <laughs> I love stuff like this. This is what I, this is, this is the whole point I made this mod for is just to see the weird stuff that can happen. Well, I didn't see it happen, but somewhere along the line, Ming got uh, punched and barfed out a couple of subjects here and lost a couple of provinces to Oirat. Safe to say they attacked Oirat. Mandate looks fine though. They seem to be doing okay. As for India, pretty much par for the course. Nothing too crazy that I can see right here, except for Orissa kicked Bengal out of the Delta, which is pretty cool. See, this is the type of stuff you love to see. Tripoli having quite a good game. 
Uh, meanwhile, Granada occupying part of Castile and Castile punching Aragon to pump out Catalonia. Where are my Catalonian boys in the audience? Leave a comment down below. Say something patriotic and Catalonian that will not get you on a watch list in Spain. Oh, here you go. How's that for a Bulgaria? Looking good. Ottomans are now like seven or eight provinces. That is awesome. So Burgundy is at war with like half of Europe right now. It's hard to say that Burgundy would actually be one to lose. They'll probably end up losing just because there's so many different nations, but um, we'll have to see how things go with that. And uh, not to be outdone, Burgundy is uh, steamrolling their coalition, full occupying all of Britain's lands in France, as well as Britain's personal union down here in Portugal. They're at 43% war score in a war that was declared on them, and they actually outnumber them even. Just your average day here in the Balkans, going to war with one another getting their cheeks clapped by one another. Serbia declares a reconquest war only to get invaded by 36,000 Bulgarians as well as 28,000 Herzegovinians. Better luck next time, Serbia. Burgundy just absolutely going off and full occupying everybody in the war. Oh, and the Purple Phoenix messed around and found out, attacked a small little Epirus here only to get completely occupied by this small little two province nation. And as if Burgundy couldn't have been even more of a Chad, they took five provinces in a coalition war against them. If we're lucky, another coalition will form and attack them as well, and they'll be able to take even more land. That's what I call failing up. It's like a like an American politician, right? Castile definitely wants them to form Andalusia. They attacked Granada and uh, they're gonna get full occupied by Granada and probably gonna have a large chunk of their country annexed as well. We'll lock you over here going for a Romanian role play. We'll see if they can actually form Romania. That'd be pretty sweet. Ming is indeed cruising for a bruising. They just need to get a couple of their provinces occupied and they will guarantee crumble as their mandate will fall. The Russia region over here, just trying to see exactly how much border gore they can create before 1500. So far, I think they're doing pretty well. Also, Denmark over here getting absolutely clapped by the Livonians. But remember, in 1500, the triggered modifier will go away and the game should proceed as usual. So really, I'm just curious to see how things go moving forward from there. Oh, here we go. This is spicy. So England is uh, crusading against Granada with Castile and Portugal on their side. However, Granada is likely to kick their butt because I doubt England is going to land many men. And if they do, they'll probably trickle them in one at a time. Yeah, this is going about as good for England as I expected it to. <laughs> they occupy the entirety of the land down here. Castile was separate piece for a couple of provinces. You'd love to see it. The Reconquista was like 1943 Germany and Operation Barbarossa. Just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now the Andalusians are uh, going to steamroll them. Haven't really talked about it much yet, but uh, the Reformation, pretty good overall. A little bit of reformed up here in northern Germany, Bohemia and southern Germany, mostly Protestant, as well as southern France, actually. And it looks like France proper is also Protestant. So quite a lot has changed in the last couple of decades here. Hungary has taken a personal union on Mazovia. Byzantium absolutely popping off, allied to Hungary, so that explains why. Reduced the Ottomans to a one province minor here in this Aydin province. Andalusia has formed and they are beating the tar out of everybody over here in Iberia. And two Sicilies is going for the perfect borders as well as Sardinia, which is also Corsica. Oh, yo, what is going on over here? Shun has essentially taken over the Ming. Uh, who has the mandate now? Ming still has the mandate. Okay, well, I have no idea what this means, though. <laughs> Ming is so small. I don't know how Ming still has the mandate, but obviously they're not going anywhere with it with their one single tributary down in Southeast Asia. Got a little bit going on in the New World. Here we have Portugal, England, more Portugal down here in the Caribbean. This also looks like a couple of Portugal provinces over here in Mexico slash Texas, so good on ya. Things are finally heating up in the New World. We finally have some colonization happening. You got Portugal and England just hopscotching down along South America. Byzantium is still going strong, so you'll love to see that happen. Lithuania absolutely going buck wild over here in the steppes, as well as this nation that got spit out from Muscovy early on. Austria, still the emperor, but Catholic is the dominant faith, whatever that means, because it's clearly not very dominant. <laughs> Byzantium converting everything over here. Ooh, they went religious quantity trade. The trifecta. Look at Byzantium, the meta slaves. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite version of this story. The Andalusian Cape of Good Hope. Now, I can't be the only person who looks at this and gets a tiny little bit excited about it. This is like a player controlled Hungary right here. Burgundy still doing their thing over here. Andalusia 
splitting Iberia with England, of all people. The New World is uh, just the same as it is in every other game in 1.33 because they broke the natives for no reason, and now you just get these massive federations that control half of the New World. England inherited Portugal and took all of their colonies with them, controlling the entirety of South America, and the Caribbean, for that matter. Imagine a guy in Rio de Janeiro waking up in the morning and saying, Boy, I think I'd like to have me some toast with some beans on it this morning. What's that joke? India was occupied by Britain for like 300 years and they didn't take a single bit of the spice back with them. Byzantium in Southern Italy is blessed. Justinian would certainly be proud. Timmy still going strong. Shun just still blobbing out. Nothing really different than before. And borders haven't changed much in the last 50 years or so. So I think we're just going to call it here. I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. Andalusia re-reconquisted most of uh, Iberia, which is pretty cool. Byzantium made its way all the way down into Mesopotamia. And it looks like they share a pretty long border with Lithuania. So I'm sure that that would lead to conflicts later on as well. I think Hungary might be the thing that I appreciate the most about this run so far. Italy did end up forming from Milan, I believe. Always like to see those big endgame tags formed. France France still exists, uh, you know, a shadow of what it once was, but it is still there. American Canadians that are descendants of Scots. All right. The Netherlands broke free from Burgundy, but then became their ally and uh, helped them beat the tar out of some people in southern Germany. So that's pretty cool. One thing that I noticed midway through is that uh, Jewish actually had a little bit of a renaissance. I assume that somebody had flipped via rebels or something like that and then got attacked and then conquered a bunch of land and then conquested it and uh, changed it over. But... Sadly, no Jewish tags remaining today. You got your usual two to three blobs in India. Shun actually popped off, took over all of Manchuria, half of Korea, all of China, minus a couple of provinces, leaving Ming the mandate hilariously. And I think my favorite thing out of this entire campaign is Andalusian Australia. Makes you think back to the days of like Drew Dernal, whenever he would have an Egyptian Australia in like every single game, because the Ottomans would beat up on the Mamluks and they would just exile themselves to Australia. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with this. I have another one in mind, uh, something involving colonialization. So if you guys have some suggestions of things you'd like to see, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And if you did like the video, make sure you leave a like on it, please. I do appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't already, because my channel is pretty small right now, and I'd love to see it grow. And I'd love to have you along for the ride. And on the screen right now is going to be a couple of videos linked that you can check out if you are interested. I hope you enjoy those too. Consider joining the Discord, the subreddit, follow me on Twitter. And if you have it within your means, support me on Patreon. I really do appreciate that. That's all for today. Till next time, guys. Stay chill.